Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you enjoyed the new intro. Hopefully you enjoyed the new Blackwood patch. I'm having the time of my life. I theorized about this build going into this patch and no, it is not a clickbait. You do get 6,500 spell damage with 35k resistances and you sustain perfectly fine and there's, there's room for alterations in case you need more sustain. But if you're any at all average on the mag DK, you shouldn't have any sustain issues whatsoever. So what are we running fellas? Let's hop right into it, shall we? So here's the character sheet, completely unbuffed. Now, buffed up, I'll just show you the resistances. Now this is without blood spawn. So when blood spawn procs, spell resistances do go up to 35k and physical resists around 3000, just below it actually. Critical resists were at 2200 and like I said, this on the back bar, completely unbuffed. I'm going to attempt one time to try to get everything stacked together live in this video. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to because it, it is a little touchy at times, especially when I'm trying to do this completely live, right? So, right now we're at 6,000 spell damage. Okay, I didn't fuck it up, thank god. So that was 6,000 spell damage, and then continuous on top, top of that, you do the math, we'll top out at 6,500. Magic recovery is 1200. You don't have to worry about that all too much because we are rocking blood spawn, which helps us with our sustain. We're using the uh, combustion passive, which also helps with our sustain. And also on this build, there's plenty of room for adjustment in case you do need more sustain. So there's what a character sheet looks like. I am running a dark elf. Dark elf is just personally my favorite. You can run whatever you really want, but I personally prefer dark elf just because, you know, I'm kind of a weeb at times. Um, running the Astro Mundus, you definitely need this for the sustain. You can kind of get around it with your jewelry, but uh, just just make it easy on yourself. Uh, run the Astro for the love of God. Uh, Food-wise, we're still rocking the Bewitched Sugar Skulls. Uh, it's super cheap. I don't know if there's another food out. I don't think there is, but uh, they did kind of nerf health recovery a lot, so um, this kind of helps offset that a little bit. But uh, those health recovery bills are uh, pretty dog shit now. But all right, so it's food, consumables, Mundus, race. That's kind of the basics out of the way. So sets we're running. The very first set we're running is New Moon's Acolyte. So the great thing about this, now you can alter this build quite a bit. Instead of running Blood Spawn, you can also run Valken Scoria, but you'll have to compensate with uh, more uh, magic regeneration, which you can adjust in your jewelry. But if you're running Blood Spawn, which I highly suggest because I'm still hitting 14, 15k crit whips, when everything's fully procced, it's pretty unbelievable. Uh, these aren't against scrubs, I mean, these are against people like 15, 1800 CP, so you know they have the, the stats to offset that damage a little bit. Whether they're mechanically good or not really doesn't matter, but the fact that you can hit someone with a 15k Molten Whip is incredible. So on the front bar, we are running New Moon's Acolyte. We actually have a decent amount of crit, about 30%, so it does weapon damage, spell crit, gives you spin rotation, and at all times it gives you a shit ton of spell damage. Now, if you guys have read or noticed that all proc sets are based off of your spell and weapon damage, which is a big no-no, is a big ass mistake, because there's so many builds you can push like 8,000 spell and weapon damage. And so, you know, ideally, like, the idea was to nerf box sets, but if you run certain builds, there's a few of them I'm sleeping on I don't want to really expose yet, but you can actually make the proc sets hit like 20 or 30% harder than they did last patch. I don't want to say anything about it because I don't want to see a shit ton of that in Serial. So, on the back bar only, we're running Bring Spoby Staff. For, forgot to go over a trait, excuse me. So, we're running a Nernhorn with a shock damage enchantment for the concussed stats effect. Nernhorn, again, to increase the overall spell damage in case you do opt in to running. Valkyrie Scory or some other proc set like Zons and such. Burning Spell Weave, running an Ice Staff. You guys know that I like to proc my weapon enchantments on my back bar. If you run Sword and Board, you kind of run into the issue of not being able to proc your weapon damage enchantment as often, running Defending as well. For you guys who do not know, Burning Spell Weave, whenever you inflict fire damage, you give yourself a buff. It's pretty reliable. So you can apply the dots on the front bar. And then as soon as you swap to the back bar, you can see here on my screen below my character model that my burning spell weave has procced. Plus, you can see my arms going on the screen. It's very reliable to proc. You can line up your burst really, really well that way. So, that's it for the weapons. Blood spawn. Now, on this build, ideally you want five light, one medium, one heavy. Um, I'm actually running four light, uh, two heavy, one medium, just because I'm a little bit lower CP. I do feel that I need just a little bit more tankiness. That, yeah, I'm kind of too lazy to uh, recraft uh, one of the sets, so 
it is what it is. So rank blood spawn. If you guys are unfamiliar with blood spawn does, because this is such a slipped on set, always has been. This is great on the DK, it gives you ultimate, which ties into your sustain, which ties into your damage. On this build, you need to throw out leaps fucking constantly to keep your resources up. Just as soon as you get a leap, just fucking toss it to someone. It gives you a shit ton of spell resistances with this procs. So a body, again, uh, you can make some match to this however you want. Just be able to craft a new moon acolyte and then have burning spell weave. It doesn't matter how you piece up the pieces uh, on your body. I'm running impen on pretty much everything because crits are still a thing. Um, I like to have as much crit as possible. We already have enough resistances, so why not stack into crit? Uh, you can go the blocking route, but I personally do not have the CP to go down the whole block mitigation um tree line so i'm just relying on just normal blocking with the frost staff and then the, the mpn is just fine it gets you through especially when you're on dark elf you actually have an increased stamina pool compared to other mag classes so it's actually not that bad uh bring spell and joy running all infuse i'm reason we're running infuse because you want as much spell damage as possible like i said if you opt in to running a proc set which you definitely can on this build so more spell damage the better more spell damage the healing more damage running uh again i'm bringing spell weave i'm running one piece training uh just for the heavy plus the extra health bonus and then the mythic item we're running is ring of the pale order this is the absolute key to the build so this really didn't go through any changes it is much less effective when you're in a group because it actually decreases your healing received so this is strictly just a 1vx item now in pvp okay so the healing really didn't change but you know the the negative parts of the the set to you know in case you're in a group or whatever it's, it becomes less and less effective the more people you have but since this is single-handedly like one of the hardest hitting dk builds you have you turn all this raw damage you're just doing intrinsically you're turning that into a nice healing over time because of this ring so the harder you hit the more you heal the more survival you are it's fucking insane the synergy on this build i love it um one other thing i will point out before we continue on into the build you may be wondering hey either there's like 5k worth of resistances i'm not getting if you can't do the math well there are these potions that actually give you a shit ton of resistances uh one of my friends actually pointed this out to me and i actually cannot find them right oh no here they are so to make these, I will leave a link uh, somewhere because I don't remember off the top of my head. You do need bug loss, uh, mug crab, chitin, and uh, something else along those lines. I'll leave it kind of floating here uh, in the text somewhere around the screen. I don't know when I go back and edit it. I may not even do it at all. I may just leave it down in the description because I'm kind of lazy. But this is really great because it gives you an instant heal. Plus it gives you 5,000 resistances or armor, or spell resist, whatever. That's equivalent to about 10% worth of damage mitigation just for running these potions. And it's 100% uptime. So that's how you're offsetting uh, your squishiness by running 5 light or 4 light in this case. So these potions are, I won't say a must, they're really cheap to make. But they do help out the build quite a lot, especially when you pair this with blood spawn. Like it, it's absolutely insane how tanky you are. So, uh... Anyway, with that snafu out of the way, we'll go into the skills. Sorry for making this a long video. I think everything kind of needs to be explained. Because um, there's a lot to the DK. It's one of the hardest mechanical classes to play, in my opinion. So, uh, Engulfing Flames. This is... Uh, just to keep this up on as many people as you can. You can see, even without buff, you get the 10% extra damage on everyone. It's a nice AoE. It pulls people out of stealth. If you're on a mouse and keyboard, it's really easy to aim. But if you're on a controller, like I am, it's a little bit more difficult to aim to pull people out of stealth. Fossilize, one of the best CCs in the game. Uh, I did notice that the, the cost in this seems to be increased a little bit. Maybe uh, that shows my imagination, but I mean, it's still an amazing CC. Flames of Oblivion, I need to explain this. This is on our front bar for the crit, yes, but this is also our spammable. We are not using whip as our spammable or engulfing flames of our spammable because engulfing flames actually cost 3,400 to use compared to flames of oblivion. Plus, flames of oblivion hits two people. So, it's a little bit, uh, I mean, actually, it's a lot of bit less damage than like force pulse or something for your spam spammable, but this does give you the crit and you can actually hit two enemies. So, um, overall, I mean, when are you ever going to be against just one person in Cyrodiil? I mean, kind of not likely, you know, unless you're 1v1-ing. We're going to jump over to Burning Embers. 
Um, this is you gotta keep this up as many people as possible. If you want to keep up the pressure, just reapply burning embers instead of going to your back bar to heal, which you should be overhealing anyway because of Ring of the Pell order. Molten Whip. Now this Molten Whip hits hard as fuck, guys. So the reason I like having this setup like this is because so you can proc three items of seething fury just by like doing nothing so for example if you're trying to kite around people or whatever you need to line up a leap combo save your kiting ground you know whatever this this fucking rock here you can prime your seething fury stacks pop out with a leap into a molten whip that's like getting hit with two leaps at the exact same time you can just instantly delete people it's a really good turnaround mechanic. I love having Flames of Bleeding on the front bar to proc your Seething Fury stacks. It's amazing. Ferocious Leap. Now, Ferocious Leap hits like a fucking truck with the CP system. So when I go over the CP tree, you're going to notice everything's in single target. We don't have anything at Thaumaturge. So this thing hits hard as fuck when it's fully buffed. It's like 26k on tooltip, something like that. It's absurd. So Degeneration, this is just for our spell damage buff. You could... Uh, potentially run molten ornaments. Uh, you can heavy attack into your leap combo if you do so, but this is actually a heavy hitting dot all by itself, and it's pretty helpful. Uh, coagulating blood. This is our oh shit button. Like I said, the the tooltip on these go much much higher than actually what it says. So, dragonfire scale. This is such a great ability because it applies a lot of pressure to any projectile enemies that are on you not only are you hitting them with essentially what is a flame of, of oblivion proc worth of damage every half second emphasis on half but all that damage you're doing to them is also healing you because of ring of the pell order so the best offense is a good defense and vice versa the best defense is an amazing offense so that's just the way the dk plays is the way it operates that's why it's become one of my favorite classes of all time but also armor this is your major resolve and you know whatever buff this also pulls not blaze out stealthy has a huge ass aoe on it so it's hitting a skeleton all the way over there so you can pull people off stealth really easy by spamming this now this is our flex spot i personally prefer running race against time so this gets you out of any kind of sus situation you know whether you be rooted or snared indefinitely which you pretty much are in open world you do need mobility in open world as a dk this is the only source of mobility you really have besides uh the chain gang ability but that skill is really wonky i wouldn't really rely on it um this removes all that plus it makes you immune to them plus it gives your crits 10 percent more damage for a while so this is a really good ability alternatively if you want to go more of a single target heavy focus build if you're using like a two-man group or whatever you could put on the ellie drain something of that nature and uh last but not least we have temporal guard literally just here for the uh minor protection on our back bar and yeah, that's pretty much it so that is the basics of the build in a nutshell. Um, now when it comes to combos and all that stuff, I'm gonna leave that for a separate video. I'm not gonna continue to bore you guys. This is already gonna turn into like a 15, 20 minute video. So we'll go into the champion points here. So I'm not gonna worry about, worry about the green tree. There's really nothing of value in that. Now the blue tree, however, um, I am only like 900 CP. So you guys are gonna have a lot more. So the passes I'm going with, I'm going with a duelist rebuff, which reduces your damage by 10%. Now the other three I'm choosing are super offensive. Deadly Aim, Binding Aura, which I think is the new CP that they added, and also Master at Arms. So the AoE, AoE abilities is like Burning uh, burning Embers, Leap, and most, actually all of your abilities apply um, a stack with the single target attacks. And then um, it's either Master at Arms or Deadly Aim. I, I can't remember. One of these specifically buffs your whip and also your leap so your whips will be hitting hard as fuck so i would suggest having all three of these fuck thaumatur surge who cares like this is all about single target just delete people build okay so there's the blue tree now we're gonna go over to the red tree i actually don't know where i have all this stuff staggered at but um, i'm going with the, the whole synergy the whole trifecta let me start over here to the left so we're going with juggernaut hardened and peace of mind all these kind of go together really well for example, uh, when you're under crowd control immunity, you get extra recovery, uh, reduces crowd control immunity. While under the effects, you also gain damage reduction. I don't run a movable pot, so, well, actually, a movable pot would probably be better with this, to be honest. But this is really good for 1vxing as well, because you're pretty much CC'd off cooldown anyway, so why not have all this extra passive mitigation coming into play? And then we have survival instincts when you're flicked with the status effect, uh, everything costs less. 
Um, there are other passives you can kind of stack into, but this is just my preference, okay? Uh, you can tweak these however you want. The champion points really don't make or break the build, but as for the blue tree, I would suggest having these three. So, all right, fellas, that about does it for the build. I'm sorry my camera angle tilts up. It's just the way my controller is because it's broken as hell. So this has been Horcrux. And if you guys want to help support the channel, the best way to do so is with a like. But only like the video if you actually appreciate the content. If not, please leave me content. Leave a comment down in the comments to what I can improve on. Put an unlike button on that. I really don't care. Just so long as I know that I can be doing the best job that I can. It's nice to be back, guys. I will be streaming. I'm going to try on weekdays from 6 until like 9. And then on the weekends, I'll be streaming a lot more. Um, ESO is a lot of fun right now. I will be coming out with one more mag dk build uh before uh next weekend happens it's more of an all-round build rather than just a single heavy bursty target build it's more of a team play build if you will so i hope i answered everything about this build in this video if not please leave it down in the comments and i will go reply to every single one so happy blackwood happy eso happy fucking week and everyone have a great and wonderful evening take care